Hi, I'm Jason Bryant from the Short Time Wrestling Podcast and founder of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and operated, and those opinions presented and expressed may not reflect others, the sponsors, patrons, or the parent network. Find more shows about the greatest sport in the world at the Matt Talk Podcast Network at matttalkonline.com. The mind of Pat Papalizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pack Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. postseason is upon us we're going to reflect back on the regular season but more importantly look ahead we have acc championships ncaa championships a lot coming up going to start it out here on a brand new episode of the pack mentality poppins podcast episode 92 pat welcome back brian always great to see you especially postseason can't wait to see what you're going to get us for the 100th episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast. Uh, we'll do something special. Don't you worry. Yeah, but the, the rate I work during the summer, it ain't going to happen it's for a very be long year. time. We know yeah. that. Yeah. I, I like my summers off. I, apparently. All right. So the brackets haven't even come out yet for the ACCs at the time of this taping, but fans have already found them. Who wrestling, leaked it? Wrestling fans are insane. Yeah. Someone leaked it. I don't know. I think we need to do an investigation. All right. We'll have to ask where the brackets came from, but people found them. They're getting excited. A little bit of controversy, but probably more excitement. But before we head up to Virginia this weekend for the 2022 ACC Championships, going to look back a little bit. Uh, we didn't do a podcast last week. I think you went out of town, but we're back. Home wins. Carolina, Virginia Tech. Probably doesn't get much bigger than a weekend of that, but the excitement of Reynolds, the quality of wins... Obviously, we can look back and say, hey, we went 2-0, so it was a great weekend. But it was a great weekend regardless. Yeah, definitely. Good uh, action-packed Friday, Sunday. We haven't done one of those in a long time, especially against two top teams in uh, in conference. So it was it was great to see Reynolds rocking. I won't tell you, there's some rumors ACC is trying to get Friday and Sunday duels coming up. I don't know how we're I know you're on that. the committee for that stuff, but I'm sure I'm breaking the news to you. You're saying we would do two duels a weekend? Yeah, maybe one non-conference. We're looking for a little TV spot here on Sunday. That'd be good. Let's get it done. Trying to find some, you know. Let's get a Big Ten team in here. That'd be great. You got some friends in the Big Ten. Yep. Uh, All right, Virginia Tech. Obviously, we all know what happened with that one. But the main part I want to talk about, your seniors went out, all got their hands raised. Thomas Bullard, Hayden Hidley, Tariq Wilson all went out. Their last bout in Reynolds and obviously, huge wins, two top five wins, and Buller started the duel with a shutout. How great was it to see all those guys get their hand raised one last time? Yeah, that was a storybook, uh, storybook ending there for for those guys and the the way that they competed, and just thankful that our fans showed up to send those guys off the way they did, and those guys responded very well, and uh, you know looked great in a in a great showing as far as a team effort. And after that, you guys had the weekend off, your first weekend off in a long time. So yep. what has training been like heading up to the ACCs here? Yeah, it's strategic training right now. Uh, a lot of smart recovery and uh, pretty explosive workouts. Um, guys look great, feel good. Um, that's a big part of being ready to go at the, the end of the year. And I, I like the way the season played out for us with some good competition. And uh, guys all got basically – the guys who needed it got to their match count, and uh, we got to get two more guys there this weekend. So uh, it affects seating at NCAs, and we're going to hit that number. So there was some planning to that. Um, we had to add in some competitions through the year. But you know, the biggest thing was managing guys that have been in college for six years. You got to keep those guys feeling good and healthy. And I think we saw a lot of that um, thus far with limited uh, wear and tear on the body as far as weight management went. I saw Tariq hit a reversal today. I've never seen before. It was very impressive. He looks good. It was. Tariq's yeah. looking good. Little dance. You teach him the dance? Yeah. You know, uh, we practice everything in the room. Guys learn, <laughs> you know, they got to learn somewhere. So that one, I'll take credit All for right. that one. So I texted someone a, a lot younger than me to ask what the dance was named. Do you know the name of the dance? Isn't it the the Giddy? The, yes. Yeah. Dang, I was kind of hoping you didn't. Yeah, I was ready for this one. All right, I well, did my homework. I saw you practicing it. Yep. 
I turn in ahead to ACC's. Again, we went over it last week. Um, since fans are asking, how did seeds come about this year? Uh, so historically, we've gone through coaches voting, and I think it's just getting so competitive that coaches were looking for a change, and we ended up, and, I, and a lot of other conferences went this way too, are using wrestling stat. Um, so it was first year trying it, and I guess there's some interesting seeds that played out because of it. Qual- what do you think of the qualifications? ACC most ever. Yeah. Spread out. A couple weights got five. I, and it's not done. You know, you know we're going to get some wild card. At, we always do. Every conference always ends up not shaking out the way the seeds predicted. And, you know, someone gets left behind and you just hope your body of work during the year helps you with that. So I would imagine ACC is still going to pick up some more slots, which should make it uh, a really good year for the conference. I printed out these great brackets. I think 97 97- Maybe it could have used another qualifier there. But other than that, pretty. Well, we got three at 97. Yeah, three at 97. Yeah. Could have been four. Maybe and I, and I think you're going to see that's a weight where someone's going to get a wild card. I think those top four seeds in there did did a lot of good work. NC State Wrestling, the only team to qualify all 10 weights. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And and trust me, there's some science behind that, too, as, as our staff works really hard to make sure we're in position to do that. Obviously, you got to you got to be good enough. And I feel like we're. We're at a point, whoever's starting for us, you know, ranking wise should be in position to hit that that part. So we got to make sure we do our part winning as well. I will tell the fans I sat in on a staff meeting. Yeah, I really see what science is going on down there. Yeah, so it's yeah, strategic. It's, yeah. Interesting. Yep. Um, and so are bus trips for you, too. <laughs> another bus trip to Virginia. Thank goodness we get to get on another bus. Yeah, but you're not going to get spoiled this time. You're going to have to sit upright, no sleep. One of those little, it. what were they called? Bluebirds? What we had know. in elementary school? Where you Covered just... wagon is what we used to travel in, as Bill and Nick would say. But they're... Bill and Nick, yeah. I tell you what, they were a little they're salty. They were Every, a little salty. Are, that I... You know, the problem is these guys <laughs> don't realize that technology changes. You know, people weren't salty. 20 years ago, we didn't have a cell phone. We got cell phones now. So we got, you got to stay with what's current. Those two were very salty. I said blue collar. I was making a reference of bus in the Just pit. They the, took it totally the wrong way. Sleeper bus. We, you know, I tell you. Things get outdated. We need them on our donor list to help us out. They are. Both Bill and Nick. Okay. Bought, you know, I will say that those guys stepped up really good and helping us with this locker room uh, funding. So How is the locker room funding? It's going out? really good. And it brings up a good point. You know, we, we've do, been doing very well in that aspect. But if anybody still is interested, you know, obviously they, we can get a name on a locker or uh, an, not so much a name, but I think it's uh, – on a wall when it's all said and done people that helped us with it so i know there's there's certain ways you can do honoring people um so we just got to do that the right way Um, but there's still room for people to give if they want to do that and uh we've been doing really well in that aspect are we going to get like a drawing of what it might look like that really spices up the fans yeah we're we're getting there we're getting close and we're working on some bids and you know some pictures but we're doing some uh, creative things so we can uh, enhance our training too as well so we're, we're working on both okay i heard of one project it was pretty cool yep a uh, little bit more than a locker room but we're getting there yeah we need it all right talking acc championships sunday nc state going for a fourth straight i know there were a lot of things when you first got here but would you think fourth straight that's pretty impressive goal to be shooting for at this moment. Yeah, it is. I mean, and, and let's face it, the competition is uh, top notch. So to do that speaks to the commitment that this this team has and the guys in the past that have been working towards. Um, I think that goes for, you know, the upperclassmen that paved the way and the new guys now stepping up big time and, and getting the job done. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, we know, Everything's got to fall into play, and we got to show up and compete. But if we were able to to compete for that, that's going to be an honor to to be in position for that. And that's kind of what we signed up for here, is to put ourselves in every year to to go out and compete and win an ACC title. I came up with a cool stat. Still working on it. I'll push it out. But five of your guys have combined for sixteen appearances. The other five have two appearances. So you have a lot of veterans. Heck, you got some guys going to their fifth. But you also have guys that have never been here before. This is probably the most split team you've had in regards to experience going up to an ACC championship. Yeah, and what I like about it is the guys who haven't been there probably, you know, have a little chip on their shoulder because of the way things played out for them last year. And I think we need that. You know, you need guys that know what it takes, and then you need guys that felt 
like last year was a disappointment for them and they're not going to they're not going to be left behind and uh that makes them hungry and making sure that they they get the job done and want to see those guys go out there and compete at their best this weekend seven guys get a buy uh we're in a six team tournament here so your top two seeds get a buy weigh-ins at nine first round at 11 semifinals at one what do the guys do during that time? There is a lot of time between Wayne. Yeah, and this the first is a, match. this is a lot different than a dual meet. There's a lot more recovery, so you you know sometimes that plays into it with uh, guys managing their weight. Um, and so you're going to see some guys you know wrestle a little different. They have maybe run a one hour weight cut, uh, and that goes both ways for us and for other teams. So it's it's just a different setting. At the end of the day, you got to show up and uh, compete hard and and. Do what you do, you know, and that's what I like about this team is they have that experience. But yeah, we'll get um get in there, get our weigh-ins. Uh, I think nine o'clock weigh-ins, right? If it's eleven o'clock, guys will uh, leave, get some breakfast, then get off their feet a little bit, get back to the arena for a nice warm up, and get ready for that semifinal match. And you know, hopefully, we can make it a you know ten guys in the semifinal. That's the goal, right? You want to get ten guys in the semifinal. So those three guys that have that first round match. Um, show up and take care of business and try to get all 10 guys in there. There is one of your guys. He's a little salty. He's in a first round match. He doesn't get to eat that breakfast. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they are. But you know what? <laughs> goes back to we talked about in the beginning of the year. You got to take care of business during the, the the regular season. So you're in position for the that extra time. All right. Uh, going by weights here. We're actually going to start at heavyweight because everybody had that question. What made you put Tyree in the lineup ahead of Owen? We... You know, off the rankings he was at, let's first of all, we got two really good options there. Uh, both guys neck and neck, um, mixed the match, trying to see. It, it was hard, you know, doing a wrestle off doesn't really give you necessarily the right guy for that setting. Um, and it, we just felt like the body of work that Tyree had had done during the regular season was going to put him in, in a higher seed. And knowing that the seeds might play out the way they did, um, we felt it was best for NC State wrestling. And it's a very tough thing to do and pick uh, as a staff because it's not just me. I, I weigh heavily on what our coaches think as well. Um, and this has nothing to do against Owen because we, we feel he's just as good as well. But putting Tyree in the two seed in the way that things could play out, um, he also was going to qualify the weight. So if we were to put Owen in there, we probably wouldn't have gotten that qualify. We would have been down to two at heavyweight, I think. And uh, it just puts us in a better spot as a program. And, you know, again, it's, it is a tough conversation to have with both kids who are, who are rock star um, with their work ethic, attitude, and everything that stands for with NC State. But we just feel like this is the, the right thing to do right now. And that was a good point. Tyree was in every single coach's panel ranking yeah. rank. So he definitely got that qualifying spot. And then, you know, things – if things were 10 years ago where, you know, that wasn't the case off the coaches ranking on RPI and all the statistical data, we, we might have went a different direction. But knowing that he had qualified the spot um, gives three spots at heavyweight. Um, we felt this was the right thing to do. By the way, Tyree, one of your four T's. Here's another impressive stat. I've been crunching numbers all yeah, week. You're a numbers guy. You have four guys with a T in their name. All four went undefeated in ACC action. Tariq Wilson, 5-0. and Trent Hiley, 5-0. and Isaac Trumbull, 5-0. and Tyree Houghton, 3-0 and in ACC action. So Tyree, two seed, up at 285. He was in the ACCs before at 197, I believe, a couple yep. years ago. So Place, second. place fourth. Um, number one seed at 197, Isaac Trumbull. Perfect 5-0 and against ACC opponents this year. Obviously, big wins against Aiello and Bonacorsi. And it looks like those two will match up in one semifinal. And Trumbull's going to have a good semifinal himself, either Shaw or Howard. But first ACC championship for him. But he's really come on since Princeton. I think he's 7-0. and yep. Three straight shutouts here. Obviously, everybody knows about his defense. But he was working on a lot of offense today in practice. He's been looking good. And we know that's something, you know, if he get that one takedown, separates that match a lot because he is really difficult to score on. Guys know that. And it's a, he's a tough style to wrestle. So it's fun. Glad he's on our side. He works really hard at what he does. He's a big 97 pounder. This is a tournament. Um, getting that first round by Isaac's probably going to be weighing 215 um, <laughs> by the end of the day. And I think that's going to benefit him a lot.
I was going to say, what did Sean Foss get up to some of this Oof. since there was no way into the Probably next the day? 145. Okay. <laughs> He's a big 25 punter. Uh, 184. This is a great weight. Five qualifications, five guys ranked. Obviously, Trent Hadley, number one seed. Uh, then you have Hunter Bolin, Gavin Kane, Harvey Batista. Uh, Trent 5-0, and looking to defend that ACC championship he won last year. He's been bonus this year. Had a very tough match against Bolin more recently. But he's looking forward to getting out there again. Yeah, he's uh, he's a competitor, and this is what these guys strive for: is to be in these kind of tournaments, um, getting one step closer to the ultimate goal. But I, I'm excited to see Trent compete uh, postseason. And it's a lot like this team. You're going to see a, a higher focus on these guys and a little more intensity. And uh, I like it because we have good experience. So this this should hopefully be something that that feeds into what this team stands for. Should we talk about 174? If you want. I feel like the nation is talking about 174 right now. Yeah, but it is here's, what it is. But here's the thing about that. It is what it is. But also, there's four guys who are in the top 10. You're going to have to beat two top 10 guys to Absolutely. win this title. So let's, let's it really it doesn't out. matter who's where. But obviously, Hayden Hiley going for a fifth ACC title. That's I impressive. Can't, I can't wait till you get him back to try for a six next year. Yep, let's do I it. I want to see how you guys pull that one off. <laughs> But uh, doctor, <laughs> yeah, he's Dr. A, Hayden, he's a doctor or something. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, great weight. Like I said, four guys in the top 10. I mean, this one's loaded. Everybody was going to pay attention to this before. And of course, I think people are saying, why did Lauk get the one? Hayden, two, Makai Lewis, three, and Fine Silver, four. But they're going to have to beat each other anyway. Yeah. And again, this goes off to the, st- the statistical data that we agreed upon before. So, you know, it's something we signed up for as a coaches. Um, you know, common sense says things should be different, but that's not necessarily the case. You know, we, we've seen it at the national tournament where it's a, how did this guy get seated that? And someone that you, you know is not going to, you know, go that far gets a really high seed. So I like where we're at. I mean, the, the luxury of Hayden being a six, you know, six year guy, he's got the experience. He knows what he needs to do. It's not something that's going to affect how he wrestles. So we got to show up. We got to compete the best we can. And uh, big things are in the works for him. Uh, he's got a great attitude and he's looked the best I've ever seen him in his career. So let's just keep moving forward. More importantly, I know he always looks to that. He looks forward to that big breakfast after weigh-ins. Yeah, he can eat a lot now. <laughs> Don't know donuts that day. Don't <laughs> Maybe for the ride home. Uh, what are we? Ha- what food are we having on the ride home? By I got the way? something good for you. Okay, because I complain. Because sometimes uh, you are really turning into a complainer. I, no, well, because I'm always last, and I get like a meatball and like a piece it's of lettuce. It's good though. Look at, I mean, your figure looks good. Yeah, I went to the gym twice this week. I know. One sixty-five. Uh, this one it might be first takedown wins in just about all these bouts, but. Bullard going back for for a fifth time ACC championship. Still looking for that first title. He yep. was runner up, couple thirds. Obviously, Wenzel's up there. McCoy from Virginia, very tough, very hard to score on. Sixty five, only three allocations, so maybe a little more pressure. When a weight only has three qualifications, is it more pressure on your guys? Do you think? No, I mean, I think just guys are competitors, so there's always pressure. But no, I don't. I don't think that changes anything on where we're at. We've got the experience we need to go in there, compete, and uh, take care of business. We're capable of winning against anybody. We just got to we gotta wrestle our style and do what we're good at. And uh, I like where we're at. Thomas has been looking the best he has in his career and uh, is, is healthy and ready to roll. Bullard's another one since about the Southern scuffle. Yep. He's... He been needed on, matches. You know, he needed to get in rhythm, and that's what we got with him. He wrestles hard and... You know, as we all know, he's not the most offensive guy, but his his defense and top game and getting off bottom puts him in every match. I found it seven and one since the scuffle, outscoring foes sixty five to seven. Yep, that's pretty good. Very good. All right, one fifty seven, five qualifiers. This one's loaded. I think all these guys are pretty young too, except for O'Connor. But Ed Scott got the three seed. He obviously lost to Keating early in the regular season, and O'Connor, defending champion at one forty nine. No better way to win a title than to avenge a loss and then beat a former national champion. Yeah, I mean, it's set up uh, for that. And I think Ed's one of those guys that got, you know, felt like he got left behind last year. And it's only for his own doing. Motivated him extremely well this offseason, not that he needed it. But the fire is still burning. And I'm excited to see him go compete because I think these are these are competitions that he lives for. And he's been in 
big events this off season, and uh, it's going to be an exciting weekend for Ed Scott. Forty nine, uh, Tariq Wilson. He comes in with the title. It was at forty one, but he's back up at forty nine. He will not meet Sherman in the finals. It's impossible to do. Yes. But we, Crazy we, that we've we seen that match up two straight years. But obviously, Tariq with the one going undefeated. Uh, great match against Andonian, who's just a fireball of excitement. And then you have another fine silver down there, Zach Sherman. Um, Verclearin from UVA. This is a loaded weight class. Very. Um, and a lot of guys have good experience, too. So you're going to see really good high-level wrestling. And I like where we're at. You know, Tariq's, as you can see, changes the level of his game depending on the competition we're in and it's i know for some people watching they get a little bit frustrated in the beginning of the year of why he's not you know putting the points on the board but as the season goes on you get to see the Tariq wilson that we all know is capable of winning a national title and he looks great right now so i'm excited to watch him go out there and do what he does postseason Tariq, i saw you tweet that yeah well he he had a great tweet so we had to follow up with that hey the dude's on social media now. I know. It's fantastic. He's got, he's got a good personality for social media. Yeah. So. He is. Uh, by the way, 149, this might be the oldest bracket I've ever seen. Yeah. All these what guys. guys average in 26 Holy years old? moly. This is, this is like a international like, rankings <laughs> event here with some of those guys. But uh, all right. 41, Ryan Jack, first time at the ACCs. He drew the three seed, so he'll be getting going early. Um, two top 10 guys in this weight class. Obviously very tough. For uh, right, I'm trying to. Sorry, semis, UNC. Yeah. Got to get uh, got to get that gotta first get, match. Got to get that first match here first. Which I don't think we we got to forfeit in the duel, right? Yeah. So he hasn't seen that kid yep. before, and then obviously both the uh, one seed and two seed, he lost just by a takedown in yep. both. So it'll and, be good. We got to Girardi. That. that was a one bout. The one like you said, we got to get that first match. Take care of business. Um, and you know if we get that opportunity in the semis. That's one we gotta we gotta open up a little earlier and and let things fly. Um, and it's, that comes with experience, and that's why you go through the regular season, see where you're at, and make your adjustments. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan Jack compete because when he really does compete and put it on the line, he's he's really good. Is Big Brother Kevin coming on this trip? Yeah, I think he'll be there. Okay, uh, you could expect to see him there. Never see Kevin in his office. I'd like to ask him that. That's because he's in the room. <laughs> one thirty-three. I tell you, every year this one's loaded, and once again is five qualifiers spots. So five guys will qualify. Um, everybody ranked in the top twenty. Uh, Kai got the four seed. Very tough first opponent, Courtney. That was a great bout. Ty got that six point move, and then Corbin Myers sits in one semifinal, and then Felipe. He's been in the finals, I think, every year. So. 133, Kai's first ACC championship run here. Should be exciting for him. You know, the, one of the things his his reasoning for going down this year is because he, you know, he felt like he wanted to make a name for himself and uh, start for NC State and not, you know, not be a guy that's behind someone. And uh, he made that decision to go down to 33. And since then, I think his career has really taken off. And this could really help him get to that next level in his career is going out there and, and really putting on a good show and performance. Um, Cause again, you got a lot of good guys in that weight and, and knocking one or two or three of those guys off is going to only help him where he needs to be. If, you know, I, I would imagine he's going to get himself to the national tournament and now it's where does he fall in when the brackets come out there and be a good weekend for him. It's going to be a good test. And I like, I like the growth that Kai's made on and off the mat. And we'll end at 125, Camacho the two, Latona the one. Tons of history there. Uh, they met in last year's final. Camacho, he won a title, got second place. So this is his third trip. Again, 125, only three qualifiers. Obviously, Camacho needs – he knows what he needs to do to get this one done. Yeah, he's got enough experience. It's time to to go out there and make it happen. You know, And that's something I know he wants. He wants to get back to being on top. But he's got really good competition, and he's – what I do like about him is his maturity from where he was a year ago. You know, if he had a bad match or a letdown, it took a while for him to recover, and that's not the case. Um, we didn't waste any time, got back in the room, and, you know, we got still all uh, our, all our goals are in front of us to accomplish. So no better way to do it than go out there and, and finish on top. Going to be an exciting time again Sunday, the 2022 ACC Championship from Charlottesville. You can watch the finals on the ACC Network. Follow us on Twitter at Pack Wrestle. I will be working all day that day. 
Um, Pat, this is a great breakdown. I don't know if you realize we went heavyweight to 125. We'd never done that before. No, nope, I like it. Changed up a little bit. You can bit. sense I'm getting more excited as we're ending the podcast. Yeah. But uh, all right. Pat, way to bring the energy today. Always appreciate you on. Now, I mean, <laughs> seriously, folks, it's the best time of year. Brackets are out. Fans get excited. Our guys know what to do. Your room was very intense today. A lot going on. Our guys are ready. Yeah, the focus is there right now. Um, like you said, I think the excitement's going to come Sunday, Brian. So we'll, we'll save all that. Um, instead of being <laughs> in my office, jumping around today, we'll be doing plenty of that on Sunday. Um, I'm sure you'll be breaking out a sweat with me um, watching these guys compete. I can't wait. It's an exciting tournament. Quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, all great action. Wolfpack fans, follow along. We're going to be here every event. We got it covered. I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack fans, go Pack! The Pack Mentality Poppins podcast is produced by the Mad Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to madtalkonline.com.